In this week's episode, I chat with legendary guitarist Carlos Santana, winning multiple Grammy Awards and being inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. His music continues to impact and inspire generations to come. Kids were listening to Carlos who hadn't even heard of Woodstock. But despite all his success, Carlos says he still feels blessed to be able to play a piece of wood with strings and touch people's hearts. So for blessing us all with his music, we honor Carlos Santana. Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for watching. This show is all about giving you insights and showcasing brands that help you to live your best life and give you confidence. As always, I want to kickstart your morning with some motivational advice to help you to feel inspired and energized to start your day. Today, I want to talk about understanding that true confidence comes from beyond the external. Contrary to popular belief, Confidence does not come from how you look, what accomplishments you have, or your reputation. Though these factors might give you temporary confidence or boost your ego short term, your confidence won't be lasting because these factors can be taken or fade away at any time. True and lasting confidence comes from something deeper, a confidence that comes from within and a knowing that runs deep. It comes from your ability to create and make things happen for yourself, despite obstacles. Successful people are confident because they built their careers from the ground up. They didn't wait for things to happen or to be discovered. They went out and used their confidence to convince others of their talent. Truly confident people know that even if everything was taken away from them tomorrow, that they have the ability to start again and rebuild their empire. When you're confident in your ability to make things happen and create the life you want, harnessing your personal power, the world becomes your oyster. As Lao Tzu quotes, because one believes in oneself, one doesn't try to convince others. Because one is content with oneself, one doesn't need others' approval. Because one accepts oneself, the whole world accepts him or her. Stay tuned. Coming up after the break, let's talk about your album, uh, Blessings and Miracles. Before we get into that, let's talk about the title of the album. What does that mean for you? What are some blessings and miracles you've had in your life? Because I'm sure you've had so many. <laughs> My whole life has been uh, miraculously uh, designed and assigned uh, from even before I was born. I was, you know, I wasn't supposed to be here. Uh, and so, I, Accepting that a person can manifest blessings and miracles is a, it's a new way of like uh, communication, manifestation. Uh, it's a new narrative paradigm, you know, that you don't have to, uh, miracles and blessings don't, don't, do not only belong to Jesus or the Pope or certain people or gurus, you know, anyone and everyone can manifest blessings and miracles because all of us have the, all of us are the spark of the divine mm. you know wardrobe provided by h m next up on the show we have the iconic american guitarist carlos santana carlos thank you so much for being on the show today how are you doing thank you for asking i'm doing great i'm enjoying life and uh it's it's wonderful where i am to constantly recognize every day as uh just such a golden blessing absolutely i mean it's an honor to have you on the show you're a music legend so this is a big deal for me so thank you for joining us and taking the time today <laughs> thank you for taking the time so let's take it back to the beginning i know that you started playing the violin at age five and the guitar at age eight so what kind of sparked your musical interest? Because I know your dad was also a mariachi musician. So let's talk about that. Yes, my father uh, became a mariachi musician when we moved to Tijuana, uh, which is 1955. But before that, he, were, he, he played violin and he had a, a cello, accordion, piano, and, and, and of course, guitar. And it was more music like uh, Django Reinhardt, more European 
kind of classical waltzes and stuff like that. So he played mariachi music because as it's a, Tijuana is a tourist town and that's the music that sells the most. Uh, Musica para turistas. Very nice. And what kind of sparked your musical interest when you were young, since you started playing instruments so young? My dad. Uh, my dad, uh, everything about music is from my dad because I love the way he looked, the way he walked, the way he smelled, the way he played violin. Everything my dad did was like the Clark Gable of Clark Gables, <laughs> uh, as far as like elegance and charismatic. So I wanted to be like my dad. I said, no matter what, this is my vocation, this is my profession. In fact, it's more than that. It's a way of life for us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I know that Richie Valens was one of your inspiration. So let's talk about how he inspired your music. Well, you know, he showed us that rock and roll didn't just belong to Elvis Presley or James Brown. You know, that there was room for Mexicans and Navajos and Apaches. And, you know, rock and roll is a multidimensional frequency. It's not just for one particular color or race, it's for the human race. And so when Richie Valens did uh, Donna and then he did, especially La Bamba, you know, La Bamba sold like crazy twice, you know, with Los Lobos later on. Uh, and so his music along with Buddy Holly is, is uh, timeless. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And what were some of your musical inspirations growing up? Well, like I said, my father's number one, number two, and number three, and then everybody else. Uh, pretty much, uh, I learned later on from B.B. King, and then John Lee Hooker, and Jimmy Reed, and, and Lightning Hopkins. That, that was my foundation before I came to San Francisco. Once I came to San Francisco, then you discover everything. Like, uh, it's an explosion of, of uh, variety from, you know, Ravi Shankar to Otis Redding, Jimi Hendrix, Grateful Dead, you know, the Cream, um, the Beatles, Rolling Stones. But being here in, in San Francisco was uh, my Rolodex and my portfolio expanded a lot. And Carlos, let's talk about your iconic band Santana, which pioneered in fusion and rock. What are some of your most memorable moments during that time? Uh, the most memorable moments is probably coming to New York for the first time and learning uh, firsthand music from uh, Eddie Pambieri, Tito Puente, you know, and Ray Barreto, like that. And at the same time, uh, I think the shock of my life was watching and hearing Tony Williams' Lifetime with John McLaughlin and Larry Young. Because I already seen Hendrix and I and I heard Cream, but I never heard anything like Tony Williams' band. Mm -hmm. that, that was like uh, discovering uh, the mother of spaceships. You know, it was a, a different kind of mentality and also consciousness. Uh, the dexterity of musicality, which to this day is scary. You, you're literally watching a hurricane or a tornado in front of you and you see it and hearing it like Hendrix and Stevie Ray and you can't believe it, mm -hmm. you know? So there's, it's great to witness today the few musicians who are left that there are like, uh, we call them a force mm -hmm. of nature, force of nature bands. Absolutely. And, you know, moving into the 90s, you know, you've you've won so many Grammy Awards. And, you know, when did you have your moment where you realized I made it and you were you really realized you were like this musical icon? <laughs> that hasn't happened yet. <laughs> I, I, you know, I, I don't think in terms of I made what, you know, uh, icon, uh, you know, there's a lot of different names that are given to me, but the one that I like the most is being a multidimensional Mexican, mm -hmm. you know, who dares to believe that he can achieve uh, greatness uh, even more now, you know, uh, yeah. greatness like my brother Eric Clapton or 
you know, the Beatles or the Rolling Stones, you know, the stage is the same, you know, because God made the world round so we can all have center stage. So everyone is equally important the same. Yeah. That people might be more popular, but I don't mean they're better. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I noticed a lot in your on your social media, you talk a lot about spirituality. So, so let's talk about your your faith and your spirituality. Well, thank you for that. Um, nowadays, we're entering a place where it's not so new agey or far out or, you know, or hippie talk. We're starting to understand that it's okay to talk about the intangibles. Uh, to talk about faith is the substance of things not seen. Uh, to talk about how to manifest uh, the impossible. Mm -hmm. how, to, how to create miracles and blessings. Uh, how to create alchemy like shamans and Jesus from water to wine. How, you know, one of the greatest alchemy that a person can do, and I'm not talking about with all respect to David Copperfield. I'm not talking about illusionists. I'm talking about real beyond magic. Like the greatest, not trick, but the greatest thing that you can do is to go from being in fear and to joy, from mm -hmm. being miserable, sad, with pain, lonely, and to joy. You know, that's the greatest alchemy. Those are the greatest miracles that you can do is to, to change someone from going to hit a brick wall and suiciding and to someone who loves their next breath and they want to dance, they want a French kiss, they want to hug, you know, somebody who wants to just live life to the fullest, that's the greatest miracle that you can do, is to invite somebody to step outside the victim mentality. Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. I resonate a lot with that because I created this platform to inspire people to showcase success stories like yours for people that who have worked hard and you know manifested amazing things in their lives and you know I'm, I'm one of those people too I've manifested so many things in my life because I believed in it and you know I have a deep uh, sense of spirituality so I can completely agree with you on all of those things and I think it's a really important message because some people don't believe in the law of attraction and all of these things and manifesting but it really is a real thing right so Let's talk about your album, uh, Blessings and Miracles. Before we get into that, let's talk about the title of the album. What does that mean for you? What are some blessings and miracles you've had in your life? Because I'm sure you've had so many. <laughs> My whole life has been uh, miraculously uh, designed and assigned uh, from even before I was born. I was, you know, I wasn't supposed to be here. Uh, and so uh, accepting that a person can manifest blessings and miracles. It's a it's a new way of like uh, communication, manifestation. Uh, it's a new narrative paradigm. You know, that you don't have to uh, miracles and blessings don't don't do not only belong to Jesus or the Pope or certain people or gurus. You know, anyone and everyone can manifest blessings and miracles because all of us have the all of us are the spark of the divine, mm. you know? And so whether you're American Indian or from India or from wherever you are, Aborigine or Siberia, everyone has the power, the gift to create blessings and miracles. Mm. I think that's very true. Uh, that was my introduction for my last show as well, is that we all have the ability to manifest and live the life of our dreams we just have to really believe we can right because we see people like you that are you know superstars and sometimes we think we can't do it but we really everyone has it in them you know to manifest the life of their dreams because we're all created equally right when so i really like that you said that and carlos let's talk about your album blessing and miracles what can fans expect from it uh, multidimensionalness you know uh, from doing uh, songs with Stevie Winwood or uh, Ali Brooke, uh, 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 Kirk Hammett from Metallica, Marco Segueda, you know, uh, the, the thing about uh, my son Salvador, my daughter Stella, you know, 
But the main thing about the whole Blessings and Miracles albums is that it's a testament that uh, we speak the language of uh, ascension. We speak the language of light. Uh, and with that, it becomes more than entertainment or show business. Now it becomes, like Bob Marley, it becomes mystical medicine, music to make you feel your totality and your divinity uh, because it's important to ignite people for them to believe in their own divinity yeah if you know if you don't believe that you have the divineness in you then then you go to be a perpetual victim with an attitude yeah you're gonna you're gonna hold being victim as a badge of honor and i find that to be really pathetically predictable and boring yeah. you know mm -hmm. it, it's more it's more fun to believe like a seven-year-old child that you can be anything and do anything you know and, and, and so we use our imagination like einstein or tesla to create newness freshness we purposely dance with the unknown and unpredictability so we can stay young mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah absolutely it, you know it's all about stepping into your personal power right and as you said is is stepping into i can rather than i can't and being a victim you know so i and you know what music is music has been such a healing force uh during the pandemic especially right where people really need inspiration so I want to talk about, you know, it's been a family affair for you um, working on this album. I know that your your wife is in it, your even your son also took part in this. So let's talk about that. Um, what did it mean to you to work with your family on this album? I'm just really, really grateful. The timing is perfect. Stella, you know, her song, she sent me the song that she was doing and uh, I couldn't stop playing it. It, it, it was very, very haunting. So I said the same thing to my daughter Stella in Salvador when I heard their song. I said, hey, is it all right if I take your song and put my guitar on it and Cindy plays drums and we put it in our album? Mm -hmm. And they go, are you serious? <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, I'm serious. <laughs> like, Come on, man, are you serious, Dad? I said, yeah. <laughs> you know? So uh, I feel really, really grateful because God is so generous to allow me, you know, the, the experience to have Salvador Stella and, and Cindy playing drums. And uh, I have another daughter, this incredible musician. She, she's writing music and around the corner, you will hear from her. Her name is Angelica Faith. And she's supremely gifted, especially with lyrics. Uh, so, you know, uh, we the river just keeps rolling along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I love the fact that, you know, so many times in this interview, you mentioned that you are grateful. And I think that's so important, right? Because when we're grateful, we attract more blessings into our life. Have you always been like this? And, and how has gratitude played a part in your life in manifesting more abundance? It's the first thing I say when I wake up in the morning is gratitude, mm -hmm. thankfulness, deep appreciation for my next breath, you know, that I can touch the ground. Uh, for this and for that. Um, so, yes, we call it with gratitude, you immediately have spiritual traction, you know, velocity, you know. Uh, so we, we invite people to like, if you want to be successful, uh, profitable, and with being lucrative, be grateful first. Yeah. And all things will come to you. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I created this platform to inspire our audience and to showcase anything as possible. So I want to ask you, what advice would you give for someone out there that, you know, is maybe giving up on their dreams, not seeing it manifest in their life and just kind of struggling and maybe giving up? What would you say to them to encourage them to, you know, believe in themselves and kind of go after their dreams? Get out of your own way. Mm. You know, if you want to be successful, God has a 747 
full of blessings and gifts and all kinds of things for you. I mean, incredible. But you're but you're standing on the runway. Get out of the runway. Let it so you can land. You know. Uh, don't doubt yourself. Look in the mirror and say yes. Si se puede. Yes, I can. I can. I'm a manifester. You know. God loves me and believes in me. If you just say that alone, God loves me and He believes in me. Just say that. Just chew that over and over and over, and then you will be successful because you will become a magnet that attracts abundance and more and possibilities. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely. That that's great advice. I I'm so excited and happy that we had a chance to talk about manifestation and abundance. I'm actually so pleasantly surprised. <laughs> you know, I first wanted to just talk to you about music, and I'm I'm so happy that you know we we. We both have the same um, ideals and views about abundance and law of attraction. I think it's such an important message and people will be really happy to see this interview. Carlos, th thank you so much for being on the show today. It's a blessing and honor to have you and keep inspiring people and, you know, creating amazing music. So thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. We are a reflection of your light. Stay, <laughs> Stay resplendent. Tag TV is available on Roku, Amazon Fire TV, Apple and Android TVs, as well as on Apple and Android phones. Watch us live through YouTube and Facebook. Hey, you can fly high.